Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. My name is James and today we're going to go ahead and sit down and talk to you guys about Reading's second round EFL Cup game against Ipswich Town. Now the final result after 90 minutes was 2-2 but unfortunately Reading lost the game after a 3-1 defeat on penalties. Now the Wembley dream is over for now. We've still got the Papa John's Cup to go um, but unfortunately the Wembley dream for right now is over. First and foremost, before we get into anything, I want to say congratulations to Ipswich. I thought they were a very good football inside, and you can clearly see Kieran McKenna's philosophy coming through into even the B team. Today was really Reading's under-21 side versus Ipswich's B team. I think it was a lot of experience in the Ipswich side, uh, mixed with youth as well. Uh, and obviously Reading had a very youthful side out. Uh, it was actually one of the youngest ever fielded sides by Reading in our 152 years uh, as a football club. Now, going into the game, obviously... Not really much expectations. I knew it was going to be a rotated side. I knew it was going to be both really rotations. Both really reserved sides, shall we say, going into this one. Reading, Ruben Seles did say he wouldn't really make too many changes. He said he'd make a couple, but not too many. But he did make eight uh, today. As we saw Kanaya boys clark starting in goal. We saw Kelvin Abrefa and Matty Carson as the two wingbacks. As uh, Amadou and Bengu started in centre-back today alongside Tom McIntyre. Michael Craig and Jack Sengart were the two central midfielders with Ben Elliott and Tavonge Rashisha playing out wide. Kalen Vickers and Basil Tuma were Reading's two strikers today. Uh, listen, Reading got off to the perfect start, really, if we're being completely honest. Scoring, what, two minutes in? Uh, Brandon Williams scoring an own goal. Couldn't have happened to a nicer bloke. Um, yeah, Brandon Williams scoring an own goal. A great cross in by Matty Carson. Uh, flick on was missed by Basil Tuma. Uh, but it was kind of like a deflection off uh, Ipswich's goalkeeper Slicker uh, and Brandon Williams. A little bit of a deflection. Caelan Vickers was some good pressure on Williams as well. And the ball ended up winding in the back of the net. And it's already go 1 0 up very early on. Look, realistically, though, Ipswich controlled the game. If we're being completely honest, a lot of possession uh, was their way. But not really too many chances created. And it was the same for Reading as well. I think we only had like three shots or four shots in the game entirely, but we did create two big chances. Obviously, uh, one late on in the game where we managed to score our second goal. And Andy Yeardon was well going close late on, which we'll talk about in that second half. Ipswich, though, did manage to get back on level terms just before half time. A uh, goal was scored by Humphreys. I actually missed it personally. Uh, I was out getting a burger at half time. <laughs> Listen, I didn't have dinner. So, what can you expect? I had to uh, have something uh, get in my belly. Yeah, unfortunately though, 1-1 uh, one, one where he went into the break. Realistically, it was probably what Ipswich deserved was at least a goal. They had the majority of the play, had majority of the possession. Didn't really create much chances, uh, as I don't think either team did, if I'm being completely honest. Not really much chances created, because it was more of a... As I said, it was more of a tactical battle, if we're being completely honest. Kieran McKenna, like I said, clearly got that philosophy locked down and fantastic football inside. Not too many chances created, though. Obviously, the main side with, what, Connor Chaplin, with, um, what's his name, uh, plays as well. Broadhead, Nathan Broadhead, probably create a lot more chances than that. But not too many today. Not too many today, if I'm being completely honest. Um, after half time, though, really made a, uh, made a change. Matty Carson came off for year. I thought Matty Carson did quite well against Amari Hutchinson down that right-hand side. Thought he got the better of him sometimes, but I thought for the most part, Matty Carson did quite well on him. If I'm honest, uh, I think a couple of players disappointed me a little bit today. Basil Tuma, I thought, struggled quite a bit in this game. Obviously, look, he's 18 years old as well still, so I don't expect him to light up the pitch straight away, but I thought he was a little bit disappointed. Tavonge Rashisha as well, I uh, didn't really think he played the best of games either. Uh, Brandon Williams constantly getting by him and uh, leaving Kelvin Abrefa uh, a little bit exposed on that right-hand side. But look... Uh, it's a game against a higher opposition, if we're being honest. Did I expect us to win? No. Did I expect us to put up a fight? Yeah. And did we put up a fight? Yeah. Second half, though, Ipswich did take the lead. Uh, Freddie Ladapo scoring a great goal. Uh, listen, the, the ball that was played was absolutely fantastic. Split the defence in half. Um, straight through the middle. And fantastic goal, if we're being honest. Uh, good finish as well in the bottom corner. Uh, Kanaya boys clark under his legs. It's unfortunate, and uh, Ladapo, who I would take at running in a heartbeat. I don't know what his situation is at uh, Ipswich. Obviously, I know he's a backup player. Is he someone that starts? I'm not sure, but if he's if he's someone that's not needed, I'd snap him up straight away, especially considering we need a goal scorer that's not called Kelvin Ehera Batoman. Take him up straight away. Redden, though, obviously did get an equaliser. Ehera Batoman came off the bench in the 74th minute. Uh, Redden's other subs as well, Harvey Nibs and Charlie Savage. 
coming off, uh, coming on as well, as well as Jarrell Dorsett. Uh, but Eher Abatoman was the one we're going to focus on, as he's the one who scored. Good bit of pressure, forcing him switch player to go down, looking for a foul. Did he get the foul? No. Eher Abatoman got the ball, managed to go through and slot it into the bottom uh, right-hand corner, past the goalkeeper, and put Reading level at 2-2. Great finish. Uh, Eher Abatoman is someone that clearly Reading are going to be relying on goals quite a lot this year. It's five in all competitions for him now. What was it last season? Andy Carroll got nine. He was our joint top goal scorer. Over halfway there already this season. So big shout out to Eher Abatoman. Uh, banging in goals for fun and his confidence is sky high. Obviously then went to penalties. Unfortunately lost by three penalties to one. Ben Elliott, Charlie Savage and Caelan Vickers all missing. Looks like it's going to be penalty practice for them. If we're honest, there were shocking penalties, though. From 12 yards out, you'd expect a footballer to put the ball on target. Vickers and Elliott sky and both over. And uh, Charlie Savage is a little bit weak. Straight, uh, well, really, it was good height for the goalkeeper. And, uh, yeah, managed to get that one saved. Unfortunately, then, for us, we're not going to be in the third round hat for the EFL Cup draw. Listen, I hope Ipswich get a good team. Uh, listen, i got to say my hold up. Hold up. I'm not really ever coming out of games saying like fair play to teams. I do say fair play to teams, but I'm not coming out having so much respect for teams like I have Ipswich. I think they're a really good footballing side and I just genuinely do think they'll be up there for promotion come the end of the season in the championship. That's going to be it for this video though, guys. Listen, uh, it's probably going to be a midweek video talking about transfer roundups, um, about the rumours coming in and out, as well as a preview coming up for the Cambridge game. Uh, and probably going to look at the under-21 squad again, winning, uh, beating Newcastle last Friday. Fantastic run, Noel Hunter's got the boys on there. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be back in Devon on Monday. Uh, we're back we're back down there, Mrs. his birthday. Uh, but yeah, running her on TV against Cambridge on the Monday night. So back in a different setup again, back in the Premier Inn hotel rooms. <laughs> so yeah, can't wait for that one. That's going to be it for this video though, guys. Hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I've been James, and we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.